Welcome to Module 4, Can a Beginning of the Universe Be Proved? This is the fourth module in a 12-module series entitled God and Modern Physics. It is presented by Father Robert J. Spitzer of the Maja Center of Reason and Faith, and it is based on his recently released book, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy. Welcome to the Maja Center of Reason and Faith series, God and Modern Physics. I'm Father Robert Spitzer, and we've been talking about the evidence for creation, supernatural design in God that comes from physics, particularly contemporary astrophysics and cosmology. Right now we've been uh, talking about, well, the constituents of our universe and the standard Big Bang model, and we noticed that uh, the standard Big Bang model says that the Big Bang occurred 13.7 billion years ago, and we're wondering, was the Big Bang truly the beginning of the universe, the point at which the universe came into existence, or could there have been another period, perhaps a period in a multiverse, or perhaps a bouncing universe that had infinite numbers numbers of bounces prior to our Big Bang, and our Big Bang is just the last uh, uh, time and in, in, in the last oscillation uh, of the universe that's been existing for an infinite amount of time. And we noticed in the last uh, um, uh, episode that, that uh, there are three pieces of evidence which would militate against not having a beginning. So even if you really did have a pre-Big Bang period, an oscillating universe or a multiverse, even the multiverse, even the oscillating universe, would have to itself have a beginning. In other words, under all of these conditions, whatever hypothetical scenario you want to raise, there are significant amounts of evidence that even those hypothetical scenarios would have to have a beginning and the universe would have to come into existence implying a creator. And so let's, before we get into all the evidence, we better take a look at the significance of a beginning. So if we can really establish with high probability from science that there was a beginning, what would be the significance, the implications of this? Well, think of it this way. A beginning means a point at which the universe came into existence. Well, that means prior to that point, the universe did not exist. In fact, there was no prior physical event. In fact, the universe, in fact, all physical reality is nothing. Now, we have an old adage in metaphysics, and it kind of goes like this. From nothing, nothing comes. In other words... Nothing is just nothing. You don't want to make nothing a void. A void is really something. You can have more dimensionality, less dimensionality. You can have orientability of a void. The void could be overlaid with all kinds of laws. But no, no, we're talking about nothing, zero. And nothing's just nothing. There's no such thing as nothing. Don't put any something, don't put any content into nothing, because nothing is nothing. Now, what's the first rule of metaphysics? From nothing, only nothing comes. So if the universe was, and indeed all physical reality was literally at one point nothing, it could never have created itself, because the only thing that can come from the nothingness of the physical universe is nothing. Well, wait a minute then. Where did the universe come from if it couldn't have caused itself to exist? If it couldn't have sprung into existence from nothingness, then how could it have come into existence? Well, there has to be something, not nothing, there has to be something which is not this universe. Something which transcends this universe, which is beyond this universe, which is greater than this universe. There has to be something which caused that universe to be. Something much greater than this universe that could, analogously speaking, think the universe, as it were, into being. 
create it anew from its nothingness. And that we'll call a creator. So what's the significance of a beginning? The significance of a beginning is that it literally points to a creator. It points to God. It points to something transcendent, something powerful. If you establish that there is truly a beginning of the universe prior to which the universe did not exist, you're establishing, everyone, that there's something out there, something much bigger than our universe, which can throw it, its constants, its space-time, into existence in a single moment. And that's the implications of a beginning. It literally bespeaks God. Now, if you take a look at the diagram here in the triangle, you can, you can see that there really are three kinds of evidence that point to this creator, that point to this God. Two of the bodies of evidence are really talking about a beginning. Uh, and that's number one, uh, the law of entropy. So there's a significant amount of evidence from the law of entropy for a beginning of the universe. Even a beginning of the universe with all kinds of speculative scenarios, like bouncing universes and, 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 and pre-Big Bang periods. The second is space-time geometry. Remember that space-time is a field. And remember that the space-time field, uh, it can be collapsed into a single point. You could actually then prove that the universe had a singularity. You could prove that it came from a point. There are actually proofs that have been constructed by, by physicists to show that the universe began at a point prior to which there was no physical event. Uh, this point is called a singularity. And so space-time geometry affords us some very important arguments for a beginning. And then there's a third kind of evidence, as you can see in the diagram. And the third kind really isn't talking about a beginning, but rather is talking about the superintelligence of the cause of the universe. So in other words, when we talk about a creator, when we talk about the creation of the universe, we're not just talking about a cause that's powerful, that can cause the universe its constants and, and its space-time field and its, and its mass energy to exist in a single moment. We're talking about a cause which is highly, highly, highly intelligent, which can assemble what we're going to be defining as the constants of the universe and assemble even the conditions, the initial conditions of the universe in a very, very fine-tuned way to come out precisely to support and maintain complexification of life forms, even an intelligent life form. And that, of course, would speak of then not just fine-tuning and supernatural design, but would be talking about the intellect which did the designing. And so we can see then that all three evidence sets on the triangle come together around this one thought, a very powerful, transcendent, super intellect which causes the entire universe to exist in a single moment. Whether the universe began at the Big Bang or whether you postulate some other pre-Big Bang period, what we're saying is all three evidence groups point not only to a beginning, but to a superintelligence behind the beginning that throws it all into existence. We're going to be explaining each one of the points in the triangle now. We'll be going through every one of them. And then once the evidence has been assembled, we'll be reviewing what we have talked about in terms of the beginning. And then we'll be looking literally at the evidence for a creator, a super intelligent creator, through the eyes of contemporary physics. Thank you. To learn more about this series and the Magis Center of Reason and Faith, please visit www.magisreasonfaith.org. That is www.magis. R E A S O N F A I T H dot O R G. You may purchase Father Spitzer's book on this subject, 
new proofs for the existence of God, contributions of contemporary physics and philosophy, on the website or through Amazon.com.